Did you know that Topaz Sharpen AI has noise reduction built into it? Today, I want to discuss dealing with noise when you're using Topaz Sharpen AI. I'll be giving some practical advice today, and hopefully I'll be answering some of your questions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, I want to dig deep into Topaz Sharpen AI and talk about dealing with noise. Because there's noise reduction built into Sharpen AI, and sometimes we get a little bit confused wondering, you know, when do I use Topaz Denoise AI and when do I use Topaz Sharpen AI? No, I'm talking about noise reduction here because, again, they both do noise reduction. Let's start out real basic. Now, we will get to an edit here very, very shortly, so don't go away. But what is Topaz Sharpen AI used for? It's really used for focus issues such as motion blur and out of focus issues due to missed camera focus. Now motion blur happens when you're using too slow of a shutter speed with your camera and you shake a little bit, you're not using a tripod, you'll get motion blur and Sharpen AI can fix that. It's a very common problem, but uh, Sharpen AI, believe it or not, can take care of those problems. And the other problem is out of focus. When you're uh, using your camera and you kind of miss the focus, you didn't get it quite right, that image becomes a throwaway image because you cannot use it. But Sharpen AI, believe it or not, can fix that type of a problem too. So think of it this way. Sharpen AI is used for focus issues and that only. You don't really need it for basic capture sharpening on RAW files. Most, if not all, editing software can take care of capture sharpening for you. Meaning when you took your image and the sharpening was right, when you look at at it when you get it into say like Lightroom and you say hey that's a sharp image you don't need sharpen AI for that you can use Lightroom or any type of editing software to sharpen your raw file because you know raw files are a little soft by nature and that's what I refer to when I'm saying capture sharpening it gives you that extra sharpening you lost from the raw file thanks for sitting through the introduction but I felt it was really needed now I'm going to go on to this edit now I chose this image for particular reasons because because it has a lot of different issues that I need to address and it's going to help you to understand when to use Topaz Denoise in conjunction with uh, Topaz Sharpen AI. Now here's the way I see it. Images under ISO 2000 with focus issues like I explained, motion blur or missed focus at the camera, need Sharpen AI only. Now if those images are over ISO 2000 with focus issues, they need both Sharpen AI and Denoise AI. And I would do Denoise first and then Sharpen AI second. These are my recommendations, but you know, by all means, experiment and find out what works best for you. There's one more scenario I need to go over with you. I'll edit this image and explain it to you as we go along here. But first off, let me show you something. I have this image here and I'm going to zoom way into it. And you can see it's ISO 1600, very high ISO, very noisy, but Sharpen AI can take care of that. But it's really soft and out of focus, okay? But there's some parts of the image that are out of focus that I don't want to get sharpened like this um, spent bud here, whatever you want to call it. I don't want that to get sharper. It's going to get sharper with Sharpen AI, and I'll show you here in a second. So that's a unique problem I have, and you will come into these type of problems, and this will really help you. So watch here. I went ahead and duplicated the background layer and called it Sharpen AI. Now I'm just going to simply launch Topaz Sharpen AI, and I'll show you what I mean. Here we are in Sharpen AI, and if you watched my last tutorial, I told you I like to use this split screen mode so I can really see what's going on here. I have a lot more real estate to work with. And now this image meets my criteria. It is under 2000 ISO, and as you can see, at zoomed in at 200%, it has totally eliminated my noise, which is fine. And also note, I'm using the automatic sharpen model where sharpen ai picks it for me and my model parameters are on auto as well so i'm letting sharpen ai do everything here i may change the sharpness here but sharpen ai has determined that i have a motion blur issue which is typical for me and being that i'm under iso 2000 it's going to get rid of all of my noise now i wish this flower was a little sharper as well as this one but i can give it some more sharpness so what i'm going to do is just take the sharpening and bump it up a little bit and see if I can make it a little sharper. 
And yes, I think that looks better. Let me drag this across here. There's the before and there's after. So it sharpens it up very nicely. But I have an issue here. You see this bud down here, this spent bud. I don't want that in focus. So if I drag the uh, slider across here, I want it to stay out of focus like that and sharpen AI is trying to pull it into focus, which I don't want. And then also up here, this bud up here, it's going to pull, it's pulling that one into focus a little bit too after, give me a second to let it update. See, it sharpens it up a little bit. I'd like to keep it out of focus. So I have a problem here. Now I could use masking. The only problem is if I use masking, the noise reduction will not work for me because it won't remove noise over this bud or over this bud down here, which is a problem. So how can I get around that? And this is a unique scenario that I wanted to point out to you. So here's what I do. I'll just go ahead and cancel this operation in Sharpen AI. I'm going to come here and click cancel and close without saving because I'm going to go about this a different way. All right. So I have not added Sharpen AI to this. I'm going to change the name of Sharpen AI to Denoise AI. And the reason being is even though this image meets my criteria of being under ISO 2000, I have some masking issues I have to take care of. So therefore, I must denoise it first and then sharpen it second. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and launch uh, Topaz Denoise AI. Come up to Filter, Topaz Labs, and Denoise AI, and we'll get started. And now we're in Denoise AI. I'm using Auto for the model selection. It's picking standard, and I have the model preferences on auto as well. This is my uh, remove noise amount 17, and it's doing a really good job. I'll take my uh, slider across. And again, even here, I like to use the split screen, which is really nice. And you can see my noise is totally gone, but there's no need for me to enhance the sharpness because I'm using Sharpen AI for that, right? So I'll just take an end sharpness, shut it the whole way off, and I'm good to go. I'm just going to simply click apply, and we'll be right back in Photoshop. It's that fast. I went ahead and renamed the Denoise AI layer to Sharpen AI just to save time and space. There's no need to duplicate it. I'm going to come up here to Filter, and now we'll launch uh, Sharpen AI, and now we'll do the sharpening. And here we are inside of Topaz Sharpen AI. Under Sharpen Model, I have the auto toggled on, so it picks the model for me. Remember, just like last time, it picked motion blur, and I have the model parameters selected automatically for me. So here's my Sharpen here. It's got noise suppression at seven. I'm going to take that the whole way off because quite frankly, I don't need it. It's already been denoised. It'll update here. It takes a little longer to update when you're zoomed out more. And right now I'm set at zoom to fit. The further you zoom in like 200%, 400%, it takes less of a time to update your preview. But what I think I want to do here is just add a little extra sharpening here, maybe to around like 52%, give it a second or two, due to the fact that I'm zoomed to fit and not really zoomed in. But yeah, that looks good. But you see this spent bud down here. I don't want it sharp, nor do I want this bud sharp, but I want these two flowers sharp right here. So we're going to work with the excellent uh, layer masking inside of Sharpen AI. So to get to the layer mask, you need to come here where it says select and toggle this on. And when you do, it's going to try to select the subject. And as you can see, it selected this flower, this flower, and this spent bud. I don't want the spent bud. So what I need to do is click refine. And now I can refine and it gives me a red overlay. And by the way, you can turn that on or off right here. And you can even change its color if you want to. All right. So you can do all that really cool stuff and you can adjust the opacity of the overlay. So right now what I want to do is get a larger brush and the sample area can be smaller and I'm just going to paint off. I'm in the subtract mode, by the way, and I'm just painting it off that spent bud. And you see it comes back to a softer look. And now I'm going to fix it up in here as well. This time I want to get a larger sample area like that and maybe a smaller brush. So what I want to do is the inner circle is what it's looking at and the outer circle is what it's going to make its calculation with. So what I'm going to do is just come around like this, get in here. And this uh, layer masking is really good with this edge aware. I may speed up the video a little bit because I don't want this thing getting too long on us. I went ahead and sped up the video here and I decided to use a smaller brush and get Quit worrying about the inside of these petals. I'm just going to take the inside of these petals out and then I'll, you know, in between the petals, I should say, and then I'll fix the petals now 
when I switch to the add. You see that? Now I'm just adding back in what I took out when I was getting in close. But this Edgeware technology just grabs that edge very nicely. You have to try it for yourself. Now I'm back in subtract mode and going on the out, you know, grabbing the insides and getting that cleaned out. And then I'll come back and add back in the pedal. So now I'm back in add and I'm just readjusting my size. size. Every time you lift your brush, by the way, it will make its calculation. So when you're painting, nothing's happening until you lift up on your either Wacom pen or your mouse, whatever, and then the calculation is made. And you can see the calculation snapping in. Now I overpainted here, I screwed up, so I went with a smaller brush and fixed that right up. And I'm just cleaning up some areas that I think might need cleaned up. And at this point, I think I'm good. The actual brushing took about a minute to a minute and a half, but this was pretty complicated. But I will say this, the Edgeware technology really helps you out. After you're satisfied with with your layer masking, all you need to do is click update and you'll see there's your updated layer mask. And now only my flower petals are in focus, which is exactly what I wanted. And now our job of sharpening this out of focus flower, which was a throwaway image is done. And now we can send it back into Photoshop. All we need to do is click apply. I'll let this run in real time so you can see how long this actually takes to go back into Photoshop and we are back well there it is everyone here is the before my flowers are out of focus let me go ahead and zoom in a good bit so you can really see they're out of focus i got noise but now we have no noise we have flowers that are in focus and we are good to go and my bud down here is out of focus in conclusion now you know what to do when you have an image with focus issues like motion blur or you miss the focus at the camera level and it's under ISO 2000, however, there's some issues where you need to do some layer masking. You will need to use denoise with Sharpen AI. Now, if you don't have any layer masking to do on the image and it's under ISO 2000, but it had focus problems, all you need is Sharpen AI for everything. I hope this made sense and cleared some things up for you. Well, there it is, everyone. And don't forget, uh, Sharpen AI is on sale. It's normally $79.99 on sale for $59.99. That's until March 18th. And remember, if you click on my affiliate link and use my promo code David Kelly at checkout, you'll save an additional 15% off this sale price. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did... Please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.